guys welcome to this exciting presentation on the topic of digital agriculture and today i'll be exploring how technology is revolutionizing the livestock industry allowing farmers to make more informed decisions leading to increased use better animal health and higher profits in this presentation i'll be covering the following topics the introduction to digital farming harnessing the power of data in livestock farming Python powered livestock data management, which is my Python Django project, actually the main theme of this presentation. The significance of digital data recording in agriculture, the future of data driven agriculture, and the final thoughts or the concluding remarks. So let's dive into the world of digital agriculture and learn how we can harness the power of data to transform our livestock industry. Today, I will be discussing briefly the significance of using digital technology in the industry and how it is transforming the way farmers operate. The use of technology helps farmers to create a comprehensive view of the operations for optimal strategies and the significance of this data recording in the industry is crucial for increased productivity and efficiency. In the world of agriculture, data is everything. With the advent of data-driven agriculture, farmers are now able to make more informed decisions that result in improved animal health, higher yields, and higher profits. This is all thanks to the ability to access and analyze data through digital tools and platforms. Now, I'd like to introduce you to a new solution for recording and managing farm data, a Python-driven Django website. This platform manages <coughs> this platform provides farmers with a centralized access to essential metrics such as milk production, feed intake, breeding, and more, all through dairy, poultry, and swine apps. By streamlining data management, this project empowers farmers to make informed decisions with ease. Poor data recording and management has long been a major challenge for farmers, leading to significant inefficiencies and hindrances to success. With digital data recording, this issue can be addressed and solved. Transforming the way we record and manage data in dairy, poultry, and swine farming is essential for advancement of data-driven agriculture as it allows for proper tracking and analysis of data, enabling farmers to make more informed decisions. Digital data recording is key for optimizing efficiency and profitability in the agricultural industry. By developing livestock-specific apps such as the dairy, swine, and poultry apps, we can further enhance the efficiency of data-driven farming practices. The transition to digital agriculture is critical for the advancement of farmers everywhere in the world. And a comprehensive data management solution is necessary for effectively tracking and managing data across all types of livestock farming. So, in conclusion, the future of agriculture is rapidly advancing through the use of digital technology and data-driven solutions this project being one of them. I invite you to stay tuned for the updates on making progress and deployment of this innovative solution. Thank you for your attention and support in embracing digital agriculture. In the next section, I'll share a mind map of this project's details. In this section, I'll be taking you through the mind map schema of this project. I've arbitrarily named it as E -farm. The e-farm has three applications, has the dairy, the poultry, and the swine apps. In these apps, there are several models, and in the interest of time, I'll be only touching through two models per app. Let's start with the cow model. The cow model has the name, date of birth, the gender, availability status, and the breed. It also has a milk model. A milk model is attached to a cow model. This ensures that you can keep track of milk records of a specific cow. And in the milk model, it has attributes such as the milking date, 
the milking time, the amount of milk, etc. There are other models such as lactation, pregnancy, and etc. In the poultry app, we have the housing structure model and the flock model. The housing structure model represents the housing structure that a flock is assigned to. So the structure type as an attribute to the housing structure model could be cages, deep litter, etc. And the dimensions such as the width and the length, this could be used to perform calculations such as carrying capacity of the housing structure, etc. And the flock model has several attributes too. The date it was established, the chicken type, the breed, the initial number of birds and the current number of birds, the housing structure that is assigned to. Initial number of birds and current number of birds will be crucial in doing calculations such as mortality rate. There are other models too here, like egg sales model, breeds model. Then, lastly, in the swine up, we have the pig model, weight model, culling model. I'll go through the weight model and the culling model. The weight model records the date that the actual data was recorded, then the, the value of the weight could be in kgs. In the culling model has the date and the reason fields or attributes. The date field logs in the date that the culling was done and the reason could be grouped under medical, genetic and reproduction reasons. Medical reasons could include terminal injury. Under genetic reasons, this could be inherited diseases. And for production reasons, this could be reduced production. And so, in my next tutorial, I'll be explaining in much more details how these models and attributes relate and how to ensure that you consistently and accurately capture data about your farm. Nevertheless, in the next section, I will quickly show a brief screen record of how the dairy admin would look like. This is how the dairy admin site will look like after we're done with the tutorials. There are these several models to capture information about our dairy farm. Let's go into the dairy, into the cows model. In the cows model, I went ahead and pre-populated the cow with seven cows. Let's add the eighth cow. And save it. Give it the breed of crossbreed. It's born today. It's a female. And let's save it. So now we have eight cows in the database. And we also want to add a milk record for the cows. Assuming that we want to add a milk record for the test cow one and it produced 10 kilos of milk then saved. It will automatically log in the milking date, the milking time, amount and the test cow. Let's assume that we want to add a milk record for a young cow. I think test cow two, not test cow two, test cow eight. We gave it date of birth of today and let's give it 10 kilos of milk if you try saving it it will throw an error that this cow is less than 21 months and cannot have a milk record so these are just some validation checks that are set in to ensure that this consistency and credibility of our data and also if you might be curious enough there is this tag number i set a formula that ensures that tag number is unique per cow in this sense it takes in the first two letters of the breed then appends the year of birth and then the entry of the cow the id this one is automatically set by django so this will ensure that you don't have duplicates and going forward there is the poultry app with its models like flock can also add flock chicken type bit layer rearing method free range Initial number of birds is defaulted to one because it only makes sense that you cannot have a flock established with zero number of birds. Then the current number of birds also defaults to that. So assuming that the current number of birds is, is nine, then the housing structure, now that we've not saved any housing structure, we will need to save one before we save the flock because each and every flock has to be assigned in a housing structure. Then this one is one meter and maybe five meters let's save it then now saving the flock it will show the date established automatically the chicken type the rearing method the number of birds and also as i had explained in my mind map 
the initial number of bars and the current number of bars are logged in to ensure that formulas and calculations such as mortality rate are done automatically on the fly. So basically, this is how the admin will look like. There are several apps and also there are some tweaks and improvements that are yet to be done and we shall do them in the future tutorials. Thank you for watching this video up to this end.